Om Shanti. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this wonderful workshop of Calm and Alive, part two. The tools to heal the body and the soul. This event is uh, hosted by Anubhuti Retreat Center, which is part of Brahma Kumaris, the World Spiritual Organization. And our speaker, Sister Deborah, from Hawaii Islands, very beautifully in a practical way, uh, guided us last week into understanding of how we can go beyond the body by first connecting with our body. And we learned many useful tools, including somatic exercises, which is a new concept for me, but very beautiful. And uh, that included how you can use your breath to feel calm, how you can use your senses to feel safe. Uh, we, we learned the Wu exercise that everybody I'm sure loved, the Wu exercise. And the theory behind is very beautiful. It stimulates the, uh, the, the uh, parasympathetic system and uh, how it can calm you down and how it can allow you to deal with many things. And we heard from sister the, uh, the, the centipede bite uh, experience. Uh, we learned the value of uh, power pause. I, I always knew the power nap as the value of power nap to sleep in the day, but here power pause, 28 minutes power pause. I'd like to more know more from her about this and how it is how, how it benefits. Uh, and very uh, importantly uh, for me, uh, I just loved uh, this concept of creating a space with your mind and uh, to let in something that you like in your mind. That's something new. You create a space in your mind to allow something in. So these are the, the important tools that we learned last week. Uh, and today we're going to learn some more. And I heard from sister that, uh, that the, there is a similarity between Raj Yoga meditation and what she's sharing with us. And we'd like to know more uh, and so today it will be part two and uh, we'll have uh, um, many exercises and uh, we'll have the uh, meditation. Uh, sister will decide when she would do that, um, lead us into meditation and we'll have a new learning uh, in a fun way, in a very nice way. Um, as a reminder to everyone, this is a recorded program with your consent. Uh, and uh, we'd like to highlight the speakers. And so your face will not be seen. Uh, and so that it is good for everyone in, in case somebody does not like to be shown um, their face. So, but your voice will be there. If you have any preferences, something like that, your, uh, your voice may not be there, just write, write it in the chat, please. But uh, it will be just us, the speakers, on, uh, on the screen. Um, um, in the end, uh, we will have a uh, session on question and answers. And uh, everybody can chat. And at an appropriate time, we will unmute everyone so that you can speak. Uh, to the speaker. And uh, I guess that's it. So uh, without taking further time, uh, let us welcome Sister Deborah from Hawaii. And uh, um, Sister, let us uh, take us to the next level of calm and alive. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much. I should say 
mahalo, because that's how we say it in Hawaii. I appreciate you and the whole Anabuti family making this series possible. How valuable to learn together these important things. I'd like to begin with an experience. And for some of you, this will be a review. We're gonna get into our physical body and then do a brief meditation to start. So notice where you're sitting. Feel the chair under your hips. Maybe you wanna rearrange yourself, front, back. If you find your legs are crossed, that puts more weight on one hip. So this experiment, let's go for equal weight. Notice what that feels like. And at the same time, bring your attention to your feet. Maybe they're on a footrest, on the floor. Feel the support the floor or that object is giving them. Feel it with as much of your right foot as you can. And then push it down into it for a little more emphasis. Hello, body. Do that with your left foot also. And notice your breathing. Just paying attention to rounding your hips and your feet have any effect on another part of your body. Now allow your eyes to go into soft focus. We'll have a moment of opening meditation. I notice the rhythm of my breathing. I turn my attention completely away from my physical body and become inner focused. I am a subtle being, a soul. I am an ever blooming spiritual rose. How do I feel as I think about being ever blooming? How do I feel as I think about being calm and alive? I am in a precious moment of freedom from the concerns of my body. Freedom from my roles in the world. Now, I become aware once again of being in a body, looking through these eyes at the other souls in the Zoom room and practicing seeing them as souls. So I'm going to play some lovely music by Karen Drucker. And notice what you feel in your body as you hear this. I will be gentle with myself And I will hold myself like a newborn baby 
child I will be gentle with myself I will be gentle with myself And I will hold myself like a newborn baby child I will be tender with my heart I will be tender with my heart And I will hold my heart like a newborn baby child I will be tender with my heart I will be tender with my heart And I will hold my heart like a newborn As the slowest part of me feels safe to go I will only go as fast As the slowest part of me feels safe to go I will be easy on I will be easy on myself And I love myself like a newborn baby child I will be easy on myself I will be easy on myself And I love myself I will long go as fast as the slowest part of me feels safe to go. And I will only go as fast as the slowest part of me feels safe to go. like a newborn baby child and I rock myself because as we did last week we're going to be aware of being a soul in a body it's quite a dance isn't it so what does your body feel like right now before we start talking about these things Some of the ideas that we considered last week, the note is beautifully reviewed. We're going to again this week highlight 
the importance of a safe environment. It's a prerequisite for all healing. And that we can't really think ourselves safe. We have to actually have a felt sensation. That's why we'll be doing some of these somatic exercises that give our body that experience. I have to feel it to heal it. And I'd like to add to that that I have to feel it safely. Again, the somatic exercise is a cutting edge mental health tool, the life work of psychologist Richard Schwartz. Somatic exercise gives us that felt sense of safety and support. And it's very synergistic with the effects of Raja Yoga. That is amazing to me. So I'm excited to have this opportunity to share with you new ways to create true connection with ourselves. And that's where all our relationships have to start, of course. We mentioned that trauma, a familiar word, is not an event. It's the experience that our body had going through the event. That's where everything happens. That's where the feeling gets retained. And to be happy, healthy, to feel connected to life, we do well to release any lingering trauma responses that are stuck in our physiology as well as in our psychology. There is this common coping strategy to avoid feeling distresses by creating a disconnection between the mind and the body. It was a temporary strategy, but now we're more resourced. Let's upgrade it. I can actually restore awareness of the sensory input from my world. I can rewire my nervous system back to its original template. <laughs> I'm in doing that, identifying and reversing the effects of stored emotions in the body. I do not want them influencing my health. As you can imagine, it's not good. Unprocessed emotions become the biggest thief to my health, happiness, and aliveness. Raja Yoga meditation is a powerful tool. It's contemplative, open-eyed, and our mind focuses on universal truths. Raja Yoga emphasizes knowing what I am and who I am. I am that point of light behind my eyes. I am a soul, a living being. And I use a body to express myself on the earth, my capacity to regulate the nervous system of this body reflect my degree of soul conscious awareness? Am I moving through the world moment to moment, remembering that I'm a soul, hearing with these ears, seeing with these eyes? The practice of Raja Yoga meditation is a gem. We're so fortunate to be learning true self-connection. I'd like to put light now on some of the research-based awareness that unresolved trauma is associated with dysfunction and disease. Stress is not the same as trauma. Stress happens when something pushes and challenges the body temporarily, but does not push it into overwhelm. It's a temporary high energy state where we're handling a challenge or solving a problem. This is the active response that we refer to as fight or flight. Imagine going on a hike or 
seeing your cat run out into the road with cars coming. What follows in our physical body, just imagining it, I feel it. It's a surge of adrenaline. And then it returns to rest. It'll take my body another minute or two to get there, I believe. We get back to that rest and digest default state of the nervous system, that part of our parasympathetic nervous system that lets us be creative and communicate and heal. Now, trauma is a different story. Trauma does involve feeling overwhelmed. It can begin with going into that high energy state of anxiety and stress. But if the stress trigger feels like just too much, too fast, we realize we can't fight it. And our nervous system is so wise that as we get the urge to give in, it's because our nervous system is conserving energy and it's actually protecting us. This can also happen, well, let's, let's think about an animal, a polar bear running from a research naturalist. He's feeling a lot of stress and then he feels the effect of the tranquilizer dart and he knows he can't do anything about it and he goes down and his eyes sort of glaze over. We can't keep up the fight. We're overwhelmed by the situation. Now it can also happen a little bit over a lot of time. Something that we just don't have enough resource for, like a medical student who uses energy drinks to keep going and to do more and to not have much time to sleep. And they find they're having to use more and more caffeine and energy drinks just to maintain the pace. And then finally one day their physical body collapses and their mind just doesn't think straight and actually they feel, I don't care anymore. That was an automatic response to conserve their resources temporarily shut down this being before it spins out. This is what we call the freeze state. So both this fight or flight, this active way of surviving, of handling challenges, and this overwhelm, shut down way, help us survive. They're not meant to be long-term solutions, but they're very important. This freeze happens even on the cellular level. It's communicated through our vagus nerve, comes out of the brain stem and down through all our chest and into our abdomen, where all those important organs are. You can see why trauma is something that's going to cause a lasting effect on our biology as well as our psychology. It actually gets stored in our nervous system. I've mentioned these three states of the nervous system, two of them survival-based, high energy, collapse, low energy, and the third state is our default, our natural state where we're fully present, calm, and alive, where we can learn, feel curious, and connect with others. So let's really get to know these states. In the 21st century, most of us go back and forth between that highly activated state and the freeze state. We actually walk around in a chronic functional freeze. We manage to keep going by multitasking, by overstimulating. We stay out of the collapsed state much of the time because we can't work or enjoy life. We don't have clear thinking when we don't have energy. 
Not to mention digestion isn't working so well. It's not sustainable. And what's worse is it's associated with autoimmune disease down the road. And it prevents us from living up to our full potential right now. Regulation, that's what these somatic exercises, that's what Raja Yoga meditation offer our nervous system. When we regulate, we manage these extremes. We can return ourselves if we're moving toward overwhelm to the healthy, calm, and alive zone. While our ability to regulate was learned in childhood, improved capacity to self-regulate is a learnable skill. Let's go ahead with some of these awarenesses I've come to about how two of these skills, the somatic exercises and Raja Yoga meditation, literally help us rewire our nervous system. Before we go there, I want you to get back fully in your body. We're going to do an exercise that makes you more aware of what state your nervous system is in. If it's comfortable for you, I want you to do 10 jumping jacks. Now, if that sounds too much, you can just run around the room for 30 seconds. Or you can even do some rapid dancing right here. Okay, 30 seconds. Om Shanti, come on back and notice what has changed in your body. Perhaps you, like me, are breathing a little more rapidly, more deeply too. I actually feel warmer. Hmm, there's some tingling in my hands and feet. We have just activated the sympathetic part of our nervous system with exercise that high energy part. Now that we're not exercising anymore, I bet you already feel it changing. And hopefully it's moving back toward that default middle ground of feeling calm and alive. Sometimes even more relaxed because we've just discharged some of the adrenaline. Take note of what you particularly observe is changing from when you finished exercising to this moment. Isn't that interesting? So I'm delighted to share with you now some of the ways I've found somatic exercise and Raja Yoga meditation to be so synergistic. In the cosmos of your family of origin, much natural balance did you experience? For instance, if you were raised in an intact family, were your parents emotionally reactive? Or were they stable and proactive? Were they emotionally present for you? The majority of marriages are now broken. So many grow up in situations of fragmentation and conflict within the family. We don't even know how to function. We don't know how to function in an elevated way because we haven't had that experience. 
Maybe we grew up with authority figures who couldn't guide us very well. So there comes that common coping strategy not to feel that distress by disconnecting our mind and our body. It is a lifelong process to gradually start off from wherever you are and rebuild yourself, become true to yourself, not just what you think, but what you feel through your body in this world. In the words of Sister Denise, we have to make peace with our past. We have to let go by going through our pain and face whatever needs to be faced. This is the price of freedom. That's serious enough. Let's just let our body chill for a moment by making one of those somatic exercise sounds. Let's do the voo. I invite you to prepare by emptying your lungs so you can get in a big breath. Empty. Fill her up. And exhale on the woo. Yes. I'm noticing all of me. I have a body. I have thoughts, feelings, memories. I have a powerful conscience. I want to value and nourish all parts of me equally. I, the soul, am the trustee of this body. Om Shanti. I've come to know that true spirituality embraces all that we are, body and soul. I've incorporated somatic exercises into my daily timetable of meditation because I find it to be powerful preparation for anything important. I do at least one somatic exercise each time I sit down to meditate. One of the things that I've noticed is similar about these two tools, that you know who you really are. And that's the way to feel safe in the present moment. With Raja Yoga, we learn that we're souls, not human beings. We are bodiless, spiritual beings having a human experience. When we enter the fetus, it becomes alive as a human being, powerful the soul. Deeply knowing the nature of the soul spiritual consciousness that supports my natural presence. It's not just for the meditation pillow, is it? I want to take this out into the world. It helps me to stay safe from the influences of grand illusions of the world, the pressures, the busyness, Raja Yoga guides us to walk safely through life scenes with spiritual awareness. It strengthens with truth. I, my higher self, aligns with a higher power and nothing feels difficult. I am stabilized from being triggered by other souls or situations in my daily life. They come, don't they? But our regular practice 
raises our resilience. It's like we get a software update. Now through the trauma healing lens, we initially learn somatic exercises to feel safe in our bodies while in every moment. It teaches us how to regulate our own nervous system. It shifts us gradually toward that neutral area of stability. And that's vital to begin any successful healing journey. And next we come to know ourselves. We align with our true self. Until we've accomplished this, it's easy to feel lost in mind chatter, indecision, doubt, hearing those voices in our head disagreeing with what we're thinking. They seem to compete for attention and they're charged with strong emotions at times. That can hold us back. For instance, when we start something new, there are parts of us that show up to sabotage that change. Oh, I don't know, is it safe? Sometimes they're young, pretty insecure parts and they motivate us to just distract ourselves, not go ahead with that project or disconnect our mind and body. I'm sure we've all known a child whose favorite possession was his or her security blanket. We're regulating their nervous system. Isn't that amazing how we figure out what to do? These are coping mechanisms. They've been unconsciously adopted to stabilize our nervous system to survive in a world that feels threatening and sometimes is. These are parts of us that have developed their own beliefs and their own MO around safety. For instance, I'm not good enough. It is safer to hide than be seen. That doesn't work so well if you're an entrepreneur. The simple intention of these parts, however, is to help us. They're doing the best they know how, trying to protect us from harm. Our adult self now can interact with these parts. We can listen to them, provide support. And then the disquieting voices become calm and sweet because they come to know that true self is taking over as the lead. Ah. The roots of these parts are found in incomplete trauma responses that have been held somewhere in our body. And we can learn about them from whatever is currently triggering us. We have a strong feeling of rejection after being the only one who shows up for a meeting. That's something to take into our next meditation. Wow, that is a strong feeling seem to go beyond the facts and something heals in us as we let those feelings move through. Our true self can befriend our parts, bring them onto the team. It wisely titrates the pace of healing. I've mentioned gradual is the way we heal. You know, it was too much too fast that got us into trauma in the first place. So let's not do that as our healing approach. We want to feel safe, grounded in our body. And then we can allow uncomfortable feelings to come to the surface drip by drip at the right time. My true self is not easily dysregulated. That's resilience. I'd like to take us to a movement now, a somatic exercise where we place our hands in front of our shoulders if you were here last week. And I want you to imagine that you're being true to yourself. You're creating a healthier boundary 
as you press a very heavy boulder away from you. Use your muscles. They're working hard because this is huge. And then your arms are outstretched. Enough. Let them relax. And notice what you feel. Hmm. My jaw has softened. Oh, and there's a deep spontaneous breath. Yes. It's nice to claim more space for the real me. That's self-respect. There's another area that I notice commonality between meditation and somatic exercise, and that's that self-responsibility is needed to get the transformation. Raja Yoga encourages us to check for and change any character weaknesses we discover in ourselves, not in others. Self responsibility. Let me conserve my energy and bring it back to work on myself if I catch myself having critical thoughts about another. This way, we express newness in the way we live, it changes our attitude. And that changes us and is a positive influence on those around us. Why not substitute thoughts about spiritual knowledge for any negative thinking? We know where our attention goes, energy flows. I'd like to keep the mind busy radiating happiness, peace, and love to many souls. How about you? Now, when somatic exercises are learned online, there's a physician facilitated group and self-responsibility is one of the communication agreements that the group makes. That they will take responsibility for whatever their feelings are that come up or their reactions to what's happening in class. And students are also directed to focus on their personal healing journey and resist judging or saving others. Whatever our habits may be, we're trying something in a new way. And with the regular practice of somatic exercise, and Raja Yoga meditation, we build our capacity to hold that regulated state where we feel calm and alive. There's a third similarity I'm going to point out. I am not my story. With Raja Yoga, I learned that I am an eternal soul, not defined by the limited roles I play in the world. My job, my part in the family, what country I live in. I, the soul, I'm separate from my action part. That's what my human being is playing. But why the soul? I'm unlimited. I learn from past experiences, but it's not helpful to collect judgments about myself based on my story. Soul conscious awareness protects me again. This way I won't be influenced by the compelling appearances of matter. The self-respect engendered by Raja Yoga provides true safety, just what we need. And in the somatic work arena, we learn that putting attention on what has happened, or what they didn't do for me, or what I'm concerned about happening in the future, keeps my energy in the past or the future. What about the present? That's the moment of healing. 
somatic exercise teaches us to notice sensations in the body at the present moment. And then there's this important similarity in knowing and trusting the body. Our wonderful body it needs us to be aware of it, to care for it. In Raja Yoga, we grow spiritual power as a soul. And this includes awareness of the influences of our body through our physical senses. They affect our spiritual development. They can distract, dilute. I, the soul, learn to become the master of my senses and I influence them. And to do this, we're encouraged to be present, aware in our body, to monitor it. I can't fully connect myself a non-physical soul with my body if I don't trust it. We have to be in the truth to see the truth. And somatic exercise focusing on awareness of movement and sound reconnects our mind with our body. Almost seems too simple, doesn't it? It is powerful. Perhaps you're already learning that. As we gradually pay attention to our body and respond, say, to what we're actually hearing or seeing or sensing with touch, this begins to restore our felt sense of safety in this moment. This is the safe entry point to the healing journey. And you know, that felt sense of safety just kind of emerges as a bonus when we start paying attention to our physicality. Now I'm gonna mention self-acceptance as another link. Self-acceptance is vital to remove any clouds I've imposed on my relationship with myself. Raja Yoga supports us to do this by letting go of judgments about ourselves. It teaches us about our elevated spiritual nature. We learn of our original and eternal virtues and spiritual powers. That love, that peace is within us. When I deeply know and trust myself, I can then let go of expectations of situations, of other souls as my source of security. They're quite unpredictable. But from my fullness, I can freely bestow blessings of acceptance, compassion, and peace on all others. Growth is seen through the trauma healing lens includes allowing our feelings to emerge from our physical body at the right time. The environment and support allow these trauma responses to safely and gradually complete. Many of them might have started when we were pre-verbal, but we now have safe tools to complete them as they arise. And this is vital to achieve regulation of our nervous system. It's allowing healing in all dimensions. And the last point I'm going to make today is about both of these tools increasing our energy and empowering us. With Raja Yoga, we grow in awareness of these powerful truths about our very nature as a soul, and we learn to live as the bodiless, powerful soul that we are. 
In my experience, this restores peace within. And it releases the high energy demanding state of burying our weaknesses. The knowledge beyond this, behind the spiritual practice, frees me from compensating. I don't have to be in doubt and fear and just make it look good. Ah, authenticity. Meditation is training for the mind to focus with powerful intention. And regular practice naturally elevates our way of being. Learning the biology of trauma is empowering for souls. Here we are on an individual journey of discovery. And when we are supporting our biology, it may also include assessment of our biochemistry. There are three key areas not standardly covered in lab work. For those with chronic degenerative conditions and autoimmune diseases, these labs frequently reveal hints to the root causes, imbalances which predispose us to experience stresses as traumas, and they challenge our ability to heal. And then we can use targeted nutraceuticals to accelerate our recovery and to build our resilience to future demands of life on Earth. This combined with practicing the somatic exercises regularly leads to feeling safer and more present as our true self. We naturally dissolve our physical guarding patterns by gradually releasing our emotional baggage and by being present to our physical sensations. We come out of overwhelm. Those times when we feel just totally tired become fewer and last shorter periods of time. The energy required by strategies not to feel is being recovered automatically. I'd like us to move around again. This time, stand up and look around your room at some of your favorite objects and perhaps the furniture that you're sitting on. Let's take 30 seconds, taking in your space with your sense of touch. Well, wow. not only was it good to stretch, but I really felt deep appreciation for some of the objects and the way I've arranged them around me. I got one of those deep, spontaneous breaths. Hope it was an interesting experience for you too. If you learn even one new thing, that's valuable. It's my fervent hope that seeing the power of these tools, you too are inspired to make a daily practice of somatic experience, exercise, and Raja Yoga meditation. Both stable us, stabilize us in powerful ways. We get to then experience contentment and natural wholeness. Let's take a meditation pause. In our soft focused gaze, feeling the support of our chair for our hips, 
of the floor for our feet. I check in with my body. I shift my sitting position in favor of feeling even more comfortable and supported and arrange myself softly tall. I enlist my ears to take in my environment. I'm appreciating cues that make me say, oh, I feel my body soften. I hear my stomach gurgle. I notice the quality of my breathing. I am feeling calm. I feel a yawn emerging. I gently turn my attention away from the outer world to inner awareness from the world of matter to the realm of the subtle and powerful. I, the soul, I am this spark of life, a spiritual being, my higher self. I can imagine a wonderful star sparkling in the center of my forehead. I am a soul and I have a body. I am an unlimited, ever living soul playing a part through this physical body which is naturally constrained by time and space. And I, the peaceful soul, am an unlimited being. I run the show from my resting place in the body, in the middle of my forehead, behind my eyes. I feel grateful to be a human being, a combination of consciousness and form. I notice how I'm experiencing my energy. I maintain a connection to the peace filled vibration created by remembering that I am powerful soul. I feel full and stable. I feel deep peace. And I simply be. I'm feeling full, calm. And now, gently. Return my awareness to how I am feeling inside and out.
and notice the seat under me, the sounds in the room. I gradually allow focused vision to return. Feel a grateful sense of appreciation for this self-care moment. I have added to my safety warehouse. I'm prepared to take in new experiences. In summary, knowing who I truly am is foundational for healing and growth. I, the soul, am a shining star behind my eyes, separate from my body and my role in the world, equipped to lead an authentic life, stable and free-flowing. I'm aware that any trauma stored in my body leaks my energy and that being attached to the story of that trauma history is a weight on my, it's heavy in the soul. I don't want that. It makes me more susceptible to being hurt due to low tolerance for stresses. But as my capacity grows, using tools such as Raja Yoga meditation and somatic work, I'm no longer as easily traumatized. I can interact with other souls happily in my stability. This restores my natural power. This is what's freeing me to walk in this world in a calm and alive manner. We may not be able to control what comes to us, but we can certainly choose how we respond to it. I'm glad that we're learning to gather new habits. It's such a perspective shift to learn who we really are and live. Our soul, the body are deeply connected. Our mind and our intellect are the link. Through the soul, the true self, we can sort out the mind. What we dwell on in our mind does affect our body. So this daily practice of meditation, perhaps some somatic exercise right before it, nourishes our true self, it releases trauma in our tissues, gives us energy, and leads us to deeper connection with our spiritual identity. We want to feel life in all its forms. It's required to heal. And even though sometimes it's uncomfortable, we can gradually grow our capacity to tolerate those feelings without going into further overwhelm. That's why the word gradual is key in healing trauma. It becomes easier to stay in yoga after simply completing our freeze responses by updating our biology and our psychology, our software and our hardware. Becoming emotionally stable supports accurate self-awareness and connection with the divine in meditation. We want this. We don't want our physical or mental health to be distracting us from spiritual growth. I'm glad we're learning more about these cutting edge resources to heal trauma just when we need them most. 
how valuable it is to discover and come to trusting ourselves fully and trusting the drama of life. We got this. There will be a Raja Yoga introductory course coming up soon. Elizabeth is going to give information about that at the end of this program. And for those who requested reading about somatic exercises, the node is going to be sending you that information in the chat. There's one book by Deb Dana called Polyvagal Exercises for Safety and Connection. And another by Peter Levine, Healing Trauma, a pioneering program for restoring the wisdom of your body. Do you like it? If it's helpful, you'll keep doing them or you'll try other ones if you want it to be even more impactful. And if you have other tools that you're finding work even better for you, respect that. experimentation and noticing what we're feeling. Mm -hmm. The breath. I am delighted that I am being true to myself. And I'm becoming free. Free from the fear of being me. Free from proving myself. Free. I am accepting that I am naturally sweet and unassailable. I continue to make effort to fully understand and practice my truth. I am a living soul, a beloved child of supreme soul. In every moment, I am freeing myself from old habits, reliving sorrowful events of my past story. I'm releasing stored trauma. I am breathing more freely. I am supporting myself to hold expanded states of consciousness. I have more energy. I can be true to myself in the present moment. My life is rich with meaning. I feel calm and alive. I am a soul within my body. I feel so full, full of happiness. I donate it to the world. I am becoming a wonderful bestower calm and alive vibrations. I am peace. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
if you want, would like more meditation, you can join us for the night meditation. Although I don't know the link. <laughs> Some of you may know. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Oh, hi, everyone. Deborah. Lots of love.